Hello, I'm Tim Jocelyn, a senior partner at Transcript Partners. I deal with all things commercial pricing and reimbursement. What I'd like to do today is talk about forecasting the unknown. In the next 10 minutes or so, I want to address my definition of forecasting and the unknown, give some pointers to help understanding the landscape, show the importance of the TPP and how this translates into all aspects of clinical development and data gathering for pricing and reimbursement. Plus look at the effects of the constituents that drive the net present values and lastly discuss where transcript may be of assistance. Moving on to the definitions of forecasting and the unknown. Forecasting is very much an art. It's not an exact science, but what's important is narrowing down how wrong you are to give the best estimate for the future. The unknown, no one can predict that, we know that. But there are ways of looking at historical trends and anticipating future events to be able to give a better prediction of where things may go in the future. Understanding the landscape encompasses many parts. For example, what's happening now? What's the standard of care therapy? What's the, the product sales like? Promotional activities that are ongoing? Who are the key companies? Looking forward to try and discern if there are any disruptive products, be they medical or surgical approaches, and diagnostics in development are very important as these may completely change the standard of care therapy in the future. Looking at disruptive agents, here's an example from Vertex, Calideco, uh, approved for 4% of the cystic fibrosis population. And Vertex are extending this technological approach of CFTR modulation to try and eventually capture the majority of cystic fibrosis patients. Important in this is removing the problems associated with an abnormal CFTR modulation is likely to reduce the future need for pulmozyme and the inhaled antibiotics, the standard of care for the current cystic fibrosis population. Moving on from disruptive therapeutics to novel diagnostics, this MRSA test allows you to dream of the potential for a pathogen specific product that you can use early on in therapies. One specific difference in the antibiotic space is that the bugs fight back and reduce the effectiveness of standard of care agents. Understanding the potential rate of change of resistance and spread of resistance across continents is key to being able to understand the potential for future markets for novel antibiotics. Here on the left, you can see the spread of carbapenem and third generation cephalosporin resistance westward over the US over time. On the right, a pure snapshot from 2011 for Klebsiella pneumoniae of third generation cephalosporin resistance by country and the growing importance of carbapenem resistance in the EU. The time taken historically for resistance to standard of care to occur and move across continents can give a guide as to how things may be in future. However, this may be slower than expected as better hygiene measures come in, or faster if you've got economic pressures, armed conflicts, or better communications, leading to an increased spread of movements of large numbers of people. In terms of addressing the resistance threat, there may be a lot of impetus coming in a short period of time from professional societies, governments and NGO activities. This is just an example of the last couple of years. You can see the GAIN Act coming in in the US, Sally Davis and the UK CMO reports and WHO reports. I'd now like to move on from understanding the landscape to the importance of the Target Product Profile or TPP. The TPP is a way of setting out the profile for a product at launch and possibly beyond. It needs to be aspirational without being blue sky. It needs to very carefully define the target patient population. For example, for COPD or asthma, if you're looking for patients with four or more exacerbations a year, or in the anti-infective space, patients with Acinetobacter or Klebsiella pneumoniae infections that are resistant to carbapenems. 
The TPP needs to give a clear view on advantages over standard of care for the novel agent. Stating these advantages is really the start of pulling together a roadmap for future development and is the basis for pricing and reimbursement at a premium to the standard of care. Writing as detailed a TPP as early as possible is an important aid to decision making and to scope out the clinical plan and potential boundaries for pricing and reimbursement research. The clinical development plan must focus on the commercially attractive patient populations. It's obviously also got to align to regulatory requirements and as John Rex's paper from Lancet shows on the right hand side of the screen, this lays out a novel approach for the approval of antibiotics following intervention by IDSA and the Pew Charitable Trust. The tier C, the small studies here, is a way of getting approval for narrow spectrum products using only around 300 patients in the phase three studies. Tier D here are the traditional orphan products. So once all this has been done, then an estimation of spends and revenue projections can be made. NPV or net present value is a one measure used by companies to compare across different activities. The differing effects of the pre-launch expenditure can be seen in these charts. Reducing pre-launch expenditure allows you to the more chance of getting a positive NPV. And this is very important as the major competitor to any internal project in a big company is the person in the office next door fighting for limited company resources. The TNF Alpha projects uh, were very important relative to the other TAs when Steve Progen put this, this listing of MPVs together. And finally, so how might Transcript be able to assist you through this process? As you can see from the chart, Transit is able to provide a wide range of skills that can help company developing and marketing products. Companies may need all or some of these skills to augment internal resources from time to time during development, or for some small or virtual companies, they may wish to use Transcript as their integrated development department to help from TPP creation to post approval. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this has stimulated a lot of thoughts in your mind in terms of developing products. If you've got any questions, either I or one of my transcript colleagues will be happy to discuss these with you at a later time. Music